Hi all, so I'm just going to do um, a deep dive into coalescences, spectral morphing, and phase vocoder playback. Um, so I just want to give you some uh, tips and, you know, yeah, anything that could clarify that whole aspect of the device. So in this example, I have a kalimba sample in here, and I'll play the original. <laughs> Great, and I so I, I dropped that sample in here. It's been cut up and spread out in the device so we can hear all the little slices. Cool. So I'm gonna start from that slice. I'm gonna first turn off this preview so that if I click here, we won't preview the sound again. And now I'm going to playback and here um, we can turn on the flip phase vocoder. But before I do that, I'm gonna just press middle C and play back the section we're on right now. Cool, so I just played it twice for you. It was a two second, as you can see here, a two second um, one shot. Cool, so now I'm gonna turn on phase vocoder coder playback and that will make it so that the playback is um, done in the spectral a domain instead of the time domain. And if you want more info of how that works, just um, search, research a bit about a phase vocoder. And playing back sound in the spectral domain gives us the ability to um, change the speed of the playback without changing the pitch. Um, but it will also introduce some artifacts in the transients. They sound a li little slushier. So let's hear the playback now that we've gone to phase vocoder. Yeah, so I just played it twice. You can hear the transient sound slushier, more spectrally. So let me turn the speed down to 50% and, and play the middle C note again. Yeah, so hopefully you can tell it's half as slow. Now let's go really slow to like 1%. Basically frozen, but a little bit of movement um, to make it more interesting than if it was just at zero and just like more buzzy or frozen. And I'm gonna go to the sample so we can see how it's frozen. And now I'll play more notes than C to retune that frozen thing. Yeah, so you can just play frozen parts of the sound um, I can even hold C and move it around so we can play different frozen sections of the sample. Yeah. Um, cool. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when it's frozen, it could have issues with this fade window. The fade window um, adds some fading at the ends of the loops and you can shape that fading to give it different kind of shapes and all. Um, but the problem with freezing is that if it's frozen at the beginning of the fade, uh, you'll just be stuck in silence. So if you try freezing it and it's silent, try turning the fade all the way off or low. I'm gonna just turn it off. The fade window also prevents clicks on the loops, but that's not a problem with phase vocoder. There won't be clicks on loops um, because of how it plays back. So yeah. Just to reiterate, if you're gonna freeze sound, you should probably turn the fade window off. Okay, so um, now that we've checked out freezing sounds, let's check out what these attack and decay of the phase vocoder mean. Um, let's say that we want the frozen sounds not to just jump between each other like they just did in um, when I was just playing it, but let's say we want them to kind of like um, morph into each other, you know, kind of have the spectrum kind of glide into each other and not just jump. And that's what the attack is for. And that will give the spectral value some attack gliding when you change um, the, the spectral <laughs> information that's being played. Um, so, it, so yeah, if I turn the attack up, now when I, if I do that same thing, kind of jumping around, it shouldn't just immediately jump to the different slices, but kind of like glide between them a little bit in terms of the, the attack, not the decay. 
All right, so let's see what that looks like. Or let's hear what that looks like. I'm going to hold middle C and go between different sections. Yeah, so hopefully you can hear that it's kind of um, it's dropping off real quick when I move them, and then attack has an attack glide to a new one. So the decay can help with the drop off a bit, and also with a high decay, you can actually create a kind of blur blur effect, a really cheap blur. So let's start by just doing a little bit of decay to help compensate with the drop off with this spectral morphing. And this is something you really just dial in depending on the sound you want. So let's start with that and do the same thing. Yeah, and this sound has a lot of uh, very similar tones to it, so maybe some of those jumps weren't <laughs> weren't very um, noticeable. But yeah, hopefully you can tell that with the decay, we're getting more of a smooth kind of morphing between the different jumps. Um, now, if I took the attack off all the way and turned the decay up, we'll hear the effects kind of different. It's going to be like kind of a buzzy, cheap blur effect, and I'll kind of move around. You know, um, maybe I should even drop in another <laughs> sample. Um, so here's another sample, and I'll drop that in. And that's added to it. And so let's hear those <laughs> two moving around here. And if I played different notes, we'd also hear that blurring with the notes. So it's like a cheap reverb that's kind of like buzzy and spectrally. And yeah, um, so yeah, you can just dial in this attack and decay to get anything from like cheap reverby blurry sounds to like I was doing before, kind of morphing sounds. Um, and I, you know, I think that like already what I told you uh, um, is the bulk of what you'd need to know to get spectral spectral morphing. Just to show you another practice example, I'll see if I can pull it off on the fly. Um, let's go to paths mode, and let me turn on the preview again so we can hear where we're at. Um, so I just want to create a path that goes between different points, and we could play the path back slowly and. Hopefully, it just kind of morphs between the different points on the way. That's my hope in doing this. Let's see how it works out. So let's find a starting point. OK, let's start there. So I'll create a, I'll double click to create a starting path point there. Let's see where we want to go next. Ah, let's just say there. So we'll go from here to there. And let me move it a bit closer. And then from here. I mean, I guess we can go here and then here. Um, now, it will go to the closest sample, so it might jump to the left or right, depending on how our path works out. Um, OK, now, before I play the path back, which is on I map to C right now, um, I'm going to go to playback mode. And now that we're in paths mode, this little paths playback settings have appeared. I'm going to increase the interval between each point so that it goes slow. Uh, let's. I don't know, let's try like eight seconds for each point. And yeah, let's make sure our, our spectral morphing settings are all right. Let's try that. And 
I think we're okay to try it. Let's give it a shot. So it should start playing here, go here, go here, go here, and hopefully it'll kind of morph as it goes between those points. Let's find out. <laughs> okay, it's already jumping around to other points we didn't want, but that's fine. Okay, I mean, it wasn't exactly what I wanted, but yeah, it's, it still got the point across and you could kind of tweak it to get exactly what you'd want. Um, you can also make it so that it just jumps between those points and um, you know, no risk of hitting other ones. But yeah, hopefully this video gave you an idea of how the phase vocoder works um, to avoid you know, this issue with the fade when you're doing that and how to get spectral morphing and blur effects. Um, yeah, and really try this out in a bunch of ways. Try it with reversed playback. It's cool to go really slow in reverse. Um, and yeah, I hope I'm not missing anything because this is the deep dive. But yeah, hopefully this clears some stuff about this. And this is a good precursor to um, my next video, which will be a deep dive about using the input and looking up points with the input. And for that, it's great to use the freezing spectral playback um, so you can control frozen points with an input.